This inauspicious car park at Kovrak in Cornwall is the start line of the Arc of Attrition 100 miler. So we all start literally here, just at the entrance to this car park. Uh, your coach will come down the road here and park and let you out. You'll wait here and then at midday you will start running and you'll head down the road down here there'll be flares there'll be lights there'll be drums banging it'll be incredibly noisy and incredibly uh, exciting for about 10 minutes and then you're on your own on the coast path so you head down this road if it's beautiful weather like this you will be very very lucky indeed and then you'll head out along the coast road and then up through the village and eventually onto the coast path itself. In my experience, there is often a mud crew staff member who leads the run out through the village of Kovrak. Now, just in case you aren't aware, and you should be by now, um, the coast path is marked by these acorn signs. So wherever you are, on the 100 mile route, look out for these signs with the acorn. One thing that really isn't mentioned often enough is how difficult and technical the first section of the coast path is from Kovrak to Lizard Point. So it's around about 10 miles, possibly a little bit more if there are any diversions. Um, but it will be around 10 miles and it will take you a long time. When I say a long time, two and a half hours is not uncommon, even longer than that. It is quite technical terrain. The difference being that you are fresh, so it doesn't feel like it's quite as technical. So just be aware of that when you set out from Kovrak on the first 10 miles of your route. Next up, Lizard Point. So at 10 miles in to the Arc of Attrition 100 miler, you come to Lizard Point. You'll pass the wireless station, you'll pass the lighthouse, and just down there ahead of us, you can see the cafe and the car park of Lizard Point. This is the first kind of major place where your crew can meet you. And most people will be getting here at around about two and a half to three and a half hours into the race. Absolutely beautiful scenery here. The cliffs are stunning. And you can see the terrain underfoot on this section is uh, very pleasant indeed. Nice, soft, compact uh, mud dirt. Uh, but if it's raining, uh, this will be much much more treacherous and earlier on in the run during the first 10 miles actually is some of the most difficult uh, sections of the, the whole run it's just that because you are fresh legged uh, then it doesn't feel so bad but actually it's really quite technical in that first 10 miles so as mentioned if you do have crew then uh, this is one of the earliest points that they can meet you on the course that car park there is quite small there is a larger car park just a bit further up the hill uh, where your crew can park please do remember that a lot of the car parks are national trust or pay car parks so be aware make sure that you do pay i've been caught out before and got a fine in the post so make sure you pay for your car parks um, if you are self-supported, you basically just run straight through this section. Uh, runners will come through the car park here, past the cafe. And uh, whoever lives there has a beautiful view every morning. That's back up towards the lighthouse. 
this is a really good marker point to get to in the race. You've, you've got an idea of what the course is like now, you've got an idea of how long it's going to take you to cover the terrain. So you can use that as a marker for the next 90 miles. Uh, when you reach Lizard Point, you can breathe a sigh of relief, the first bit is over and the running does get a little bit easier after this point for the next 15 miles or so before you get to Porth Levin. Up past another cafe up these steps. And then you can see there it is two and a half miles to Kynance Cove and it's 40 miles to the halfway point which is pretty much Land's End. So stick around, next video in the series is Kynance Cove. So welcome to uh, a beautifully sunny but very windy uh, Kynance. We're about a mile away from Kynance Cove itself. Uh, this is the old coast path here that I'm pointing out. Uh, you can see where the fence is there. That's where the old coast path used to go but it's now fenced off. And the reason for that is because of coastal erosion. You can see in the distance there where uh, some of the cliff has fallen into the sea. Uh, the old coast path used to go along there, it's simply too dangerous now. Either the coast path doesn't exist anymore because it has fallen into the sea or it's very close to the edge. So uh, the council have built uh, a new or uh, constructed a new coast path there. You can see some brand new steps and this really is very, very new indeed. I had never seen this before until I got here to, uh, to have a look. So this has all been newly constructed. Uh, there's a, a Kynance Cove one mile acorn. You can see how new that uh, wooden strut is there. And you get to this section here. So there again, I think that's possibly part of the old coast path there uh, joining on. And this, well, this is beautiful, isn't it? Um, nicely almost paved road to run on here. Uh, you didn't get this a few years ago. Um, still a little bit of uh, a little bit of mud and uh, and if it's raining it might be a bit slippy but uh, generally this section now is uh, is very nice um, and, and generally the running here um, all the way to Port Levin is not too bad at all uh, just a few places where you know you might wonder where the coast path is uh, but when you're at sections like this it's absolutely fine and, and you'll you'll enjoy running on this bit um, I think I was pointing out where I thought maybe some of the old coast path was there. But look here, you're basically on grass, not entirely sure where the coast path might be. Don't wander too far to the edge there. Uh, but again, uh, you just have to kind of wander a bit over and you'll, you'll find the path again. There are, there are various different little routes that you can take over this area. Uh, but here we are back on this new path. Uh, heading towards Kynance Cove itself and down there um, a few years ago you used to go down onto the shingle beach um, and have to avoid the waves as they crashed in uh, to the little cove. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm sure somebody will say in the comments if we do that now but, but Kynance Cove is a very pretty little cove. And next up we have Mullion Cove. This is Mullion Cove. So this is about 17, 16, 17 miles into the run. Runners will come down off the top of that hill, into the cove here, down those steps, across the uh, little harbour here. And then they will cross and go up those steps and back up onto the coast path up on the hill up there. 
So whilst Mullion Cove is a very small little cove, uh, it is possible and it is uh, used by crew uh, to meet runners as they come down off the hill uh, and into the harbour here. Um, just quick refuel, quick drink, quick bite to eat and then off again. Obviously if you're self-supported straight through and out again. Next up we have Gunwello. This is Gunwallow. Uh, we're about 21 miles into the Arc of Attrition 100 at this point. And this is another point at which the coast path has been diverted. This was done probably a few years ago now, about four years ago perhaps. But you can see where the old path went along here. And it's now blocked off by a fence uh, because this section of the path is really too close to the edge for comfort. Just there you can see it gets very very close to the edge and there's about a 50 foot drop on the other side of that cliff. So they've diverted the coast path just up to here. And over in the distance there you can see Porth Leven uh, which is at 25-ish miles and that is the first official checkpoint and aid station. So this is Gunwallow or Gunwallow, I'm, I'm never quite sure how to pronounce it. So if we just carry on along this path here we'll show you where the diversion goes because uh, there is a little tiny bit of climbing in this, you do have to go up some steps to a higher path. Uh, when we were on the lower path uh, it was straight and flat all the way along to the beach at Lou Bar uh, but now you do have to go up a bit. And you can see the sign here that says uh, coast path diversion so it should be fairly straightforward to know where you're going. And then when we get up to the top of this climb here there is another acorn and another arrow pointing you in the right direction. So you turn left at the top here and carry on this much wider road uh, down to uh, towards the beach at Lou Bar. And Lou Bar is the next stop in our series. So having travelled from Kovrak through Lizard Point and on past Kynance Cove and Mullion Cove and along the top of the cliffs at Gunwallo, you now come to Low Bar. This is the beach at Low Bar. So runners will drop down off the cliff on a nice wide path, nice easy path. It's easy running. Uh, the beach can be a little heavy, it can feel a little bit heavy and a bit of a drag to get across the beach and you might find yourself walking. Uh, it's a bit shingly as well, it's not, it's not just sand, it's shingly beach. Uh, so you get across the beach, you head for that white building over there and then it's road all the way, uh, pretty much tarmac road all the way into Porth Leven and that is our next stop, next in the series. Porth Leven. And this is the seaside town of Porth Leven. You will arrive here maybe just as it's getting dark, maybe it will just have got dark, uh, but this will be the first aid station that you will come to at 25 or so miles into the Arc of Attrition you will arrive here you'll come past that tower there uh, off the coast path uh, onto the road run into Port Leven past that tower then you'll come down this road once you get here you will be met by valets archangels 
who will walk you up to the football club, which is the uh, aid station in Porth Leven. It's a right turn from this exact point, 400 metre walk up to the football club. And then you'll come back down to this coast path sign here and uh, you will take the lower path along the harbour and then back onto the coast path. And again, if you're unsure, you'll see the coast path sign there. So you're not going you're not going on the higher road up there you're going on this road here and you constantly need to just keep looking out for things like this so that obviously telling you you're on the right path and you need to keep going up here and there'll be little things like that all across the coast path, all around the entire 100 miles, where you just keep your eyes out and you'll see the path. Once runners have finished at the checkpoint at uh, Port Leven, uh, back on the coast path, they'll go past Pra Sands or Pre Sands and then through Perinuthno as well. And finally, they'll come inland at Marizion. Uh, now, the coast path again is changed here. You do come inland a little bit earlier than you used to because, again, coast path has fallen into the sea and is no longer able to be used. So you come in on this path here and you head past St. Michael's Mount. Unfortunately, when you come on this road, if you're one of the runners in the Ark of Attrition 100, you will probably not see St. Michael's Mount because it will be pitch black. Uh, so you'll pass along this path, uh, take a note here of the acorn sign on the bin, and then carry on up the hill again until you get to the road. Uh, there's another acorn sign on a post just here and then you cross the road and uh, sometimes crews will meet runners here uh, because the next section is about seven miles, eight miles into Penzance, all on tarmac or path. Uh, so uh, you will sometimes want to change shoes here into road shoes. Uh, some people do, some people don't. Um, and then you're on your way into Penzance. Welcome to Penzance. So runners by now are at around about 37 miles. Uh, they've come along this seafront here. That's the road they're going to go down to get to the aid station. And when they come back out, they will head to Mausel and out of Penzance along the coast path all the way up the hills there and eventually out. There's another two miles of tarmac from the aid station. Um, so they've come along all the way from Marazion on tarmac, five miles of tarmac and path by the railway line. And then you head uh, down here and you cross the road. There will be archangels at this crossing and they will direct you down this road. Uh, it's not too far down here to the rugby club, which is the aid station, the second major aid station um, on the Ark of Attrition. You must come here. So um, even if you don't want to enter the aid stations, even if you're being totally crude, you must come to all the aid stations, at least put your foot on the threshold. So that means walking up to these two red pillars here and, uh, and putting your foot in and telling the, uh, the aid station uh, manager that you are there. They can tick you off. Um, if you are going in, you go in through those doors there. And then when you finished, you'll come back out and head back up the same path that you just came down, the same road you just came down, back up to the seafront there where you will continue your journey on. Again, out to Mausel, a uh, small village just next to Penzance. You're still on the road. Then you'll start climbing a hill up the road, along the road, and then eventually you'll hit the coast path again. miles five miles on from Penzance this is Le Morna Cove uh, crews can meet runners here uh, it's a very small little village uh, nestled in a valley and um, very tight roads to get here runners will be coming through here in the middle of the night we're looking at 
10, 11, midnight to get here. Uh, coming down this path in the night, it does feel like you're quite close to the edge sometimes. So it's about 45 miles in, something like that. Come to a little bridge with the coast path sign on it. And the next section is very, is a very interesting uh, bit that often confuses people. So uh, I'll just show you what I mean. It's a little walk along the path here, but it's, it's worth seeing. In the dark, this is scary as. It's not scary, but it, in the dark, it feels like it. And you don't know where the heck you're going. You've got a big cliff on your right hand side. But look, so look how, how near we are to a, a fair drop down to the sea. This is in the dark. So you climb up here, again, right near the edge of a nice big drop down there. And you look at this and you go, where the heck am I supposed to go? <laughs> Where's the path? But um, you kind of make your way and it is here. Uh, not that way, but this way. You have to be a bit sure of your footing and you make your way through here and up onto the rocks and then you suddenly see, oh yes, look, a path of sorts. I can't stress enough, you're in the dark and uh, there's another nice drop right beside you and, and you head off along there. So this is the coast path coming along from Porth Kurnow Beach. So you've come down off one side of the valley, across the beach, and then back onto the coast path, up onto this side of the valley, running along here. And you get to this point here, and you get to this coast path side here, which directs you up these steps. So away we go pitch black, head torch on, 50 miles in to the Arc of Attrition 100. So you're halfway through. So it's actually a good place to get to because you know that you've reached a milestone in the race. Minak Theatre is an iconic place to get to. And uh, so when you're climbing these steps, even though you are scared stiff of that drop there, and you can hear the waves crashing on the rocks below, you should have a sense of relief in you that you are getting the back broken of this run. So up these and this is where it gets pretty steep. Hands on the floor as you climb up this bit. And again, don't want to fall really here, but um, it's not too bad. You've just got to be a little bit careful as you go up. Again, if you're nervous, like I am always on heights, three points of contact, sure you put one hand down on the ground as you climb up and then you get here and it's a bit safer you've got a railing to hold on to got the fencing the seat now feels a little bit further behind you and so the last thing to do is to meet your crew now in the car park of the theatre and you'll be able to see the lights of the cars and you'll uh, hear some chatter, hopefully. There's uh, only a couple of cars there now, but this will be fairly busy at one o'clock in the morning on the 28th, 29th of January.
So at 54 miles into the Arc of Attrition, you will follow this path, and this path will lead you to aid station number three at Land's End. So here we are at the Land's End Hotel. Now the aid station is at the back of the hotel. Your crew can get round there if, if they want to park in the car park, but that is the aid station. Uh, your crew can't go in there, obviously, but they can meet you in the car park at the Land's End Hotel. Once you've finished in the aid station there, you'll come back out of the back of the hotel, round here and down these steps, and you will head off towards Senan and Senan Cove. Follow that tarmac path there, uh, the one in the middle, the one that's going straight ahead, towards that white building in the distance there. So we're going to jump now over to that white building um, because it's tricky. There are a lot of paths that lead out of, of Land's End and it, it can be a little bit tricky. So you get to that coast path sign that says Senan One Mile and it turns to a, a normal kind of dirt track. Um, you can see the path there. There's the, there's the path that you've come on from Land's End in the distance there. It's a tarmac track. It's a well a well used tourist path. And then you get to the White House and you see this sign for Senan One Mile and you follow that path there all the way to Senan. There's a tricky bit. You need to make sure you're on the right path when you get towards Senan. Uh, but hopefully out of Land's End, that should give you a good idea where to go. In the distance, you can see Land's End Hotel. This is where you need to come down. Now you need to keep an eye on your navigation here because there is a left path that you need to take. If you take this, if you take the top path, you'll end up going around the back of Senan and you'll have to come down on that road there into Senan and you'll, you'll extend your journey a little bit. It's a bit of a pain. Um, the best way to do it, the correct way to do it, is to follow the path to the left to get to this building. Now in the dark, obviously, you won't be able to see it very clearly. Shine your head torches up to see if you can see it on the headland here. One mile from Land's End, this building, and then you take this path going down. So uh, just make sure your runner knows where they're going. It's not the end of the world if you get it wrong. It just extends your journey a little way. Uh, but this is the path you need to come down. So you're going to get here. Runners will get here. What, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning even, maybe. This is uh, another little bit that's a little bit tricky, uh, but there will usually be a marshal here to tell you where to go. Uh, so if your runner gets to here, this is the second car park at Senate Cove. So you've come down from the promontory up there, and you've come all the way through uh, the village, and you come to this second car park, and you might be a bit confused as to where to go next. And this is where you go. There will be a, probably a marshal here to tell you but you don't, you don't follow the path down there. You go up here and it's not actually marked. There's no mark. So basically that, that's the coast path there. You follow that path. Here we are at the rugged and beautiful windswept Cape Cornwall. Uh, runners will be getting here three, four, five o'clock in the morning, may even be getting light for some people. Come down from that white house on the path and you'll drop down uh, by the wall and come up these steps. You can meet your crew if you go up that path there or you can carry on up here and go up the road. Uh, there's a coast path sign there. So up this path, and then onto the road and just follow this tarmac road up here and you'll come to the car park on the right hand side uh, where you can meet your crew. Now remember you're getting into the rugged section, the tin mine section. 
Uh, so you might want to change your shoes, get yourself nice and warm, get a bit of food in you before you head off into the night again uh, towards Pendine Watch. Uh, the official coast path goes up this path here, but you can carry on up the road if you want to uh, until you get to this sign here, which says Pendine Watch Lighthouse, three and a half miles. Uh, that's your last stop before the long 13 mile rugged section to St Ives. So along that path there. At this point, you are 62 or so miles into the Arc of Attrition 100. So here we are in mining country. You can see behind that coast path sign there, the chimneys. This is Givor Tin Mine or Givor Tin Mine. Don't ask me about Cornish pronunciations. Uh, it's actually not far away from the town there. You can see the houses in the distance, although it feels very remote. When you're running through here in the dead of night, actually, you're not really more than half a mile away from those houses there and, and the road. So if you do need an escape route, you can do that. I can also see from here just the tip of the Pendine Watch Lighthouse. Uh, we are about a mile away from Pendine Watch Lighthouse from here. Uh, the running is still relatively good. We haven't quite got to the tough, gnarly section of the course yet, but uh, it will happen very shortly. So you can see all these chimneys here. Uh, this means do not leave the coast path. There are a few different paths you can take, but certainly don't try and wander off onto the grass too much. Uh, there are open tin mines, open shafts. Uh, there may be shafts that nobody knows about uh, that you end up at the bottom of. So please do be careful. Uh, stick to the paths. Uh, there's me just pointing out that I can see Pendine Watch Lighthouse in the distance. When you come through here, you will hopefully still be feeling good and you will meet your crew, perhaps at Pendine Watch, for the final crew stop before you head out into the really wild section of the uh, Arc of Attrition 100. So next stop is Pendine Watch Lighthouse. Here we are at Pendine Watch. Look at the uh, waves on the rocks down there. Uh, there's Pendine Watch Lighthouse itself with the big black fog horns that blast out when visibility is low. Now the official coast path uh, does actually join the road about a quarter of a mile up and then you run into the car park on the road. Uh, however, if you want to keep running on softer ground, there is a path just beside the road and then you can come in through this gap here. Again, you can just see uh, the lighthouse there. Crew can park in this car park here and um, wait for runners. Uh, so last stop before you head along the coast path down here past the lighthouse um, you'll get to this sign here. Believe it or not, that does say Coast Path and then Zenor 6 miles. Uh, so you head down that path there and on into the distance. You now have 13 miles of uh, some of the most rugged coastal path you will find in the country until you get to uh, St Ives. Here we are on the coast path. We are four miles away from Pendine Watch Lighthouse and in the distance there, two miles away is Zenor. Uh, so you can split this section between Pendine and St Ives into two and Zenor is kind of in the middle. That promontory there is Gunnard's Head and that drop down there is best avoided. Stick to the path. 
Uh, navigation is really relatively easy here. Uh, you do just follow the path and keep the sea on your left. You go down into the valleys, you come back up out of the valleys. You go off to the headland, you come back in from the headland. Keeping the sea on your left is, is basically the rule here. Um, also, you might feel very remote here. You might feel that you're miles from anywhere, but actually um, you are not really ever that far away from an escape route. Uh, we will in a second uh, travel down the coast path and we'll come to a little signpost. And the signpost will point uh, left to Gunnard's Head, straight on to the coast path and right a quarter of a mile away, uh, just a little bit more, is a village called Treen. If you are injured, uh, if you need to drop from the race, if you need to get off the coast path, uh, there is an escape route, half an hour's walk, you will be in a village on a road uh, and you can get help. So uh, you are never that far away uh, from civilization, even in this remotest of sections. If you get here during uh, the daybreak, you will have stunning views. Otherwise, keep going with your head torch on to Zenor. Here we are at Zenor Head. So it's seven miles back along the coast path to Pendeen Watch Lighthouse. And you can just see Gunnard's Head, uh, the promontory just there two miles away in the distance where we've come from. And you've come along the coast path to Zenor here. Now, again, if you're injured, if you need to drop from the race, uh, if you can't go on, there is that path there and you will get half a mile uh, to Zenor Village half a mile down there, half an hour's walk, and you will be at Zenor Village where you can uh, drop from the race. Otherwise, you carry on on the coast path to Zenor Headland. Now, you must not cut off the headlands. Uh, I am going to take the shortcut here, so you can see the coast path goes off there round the headland. It's not far. Um, some people have been known to use shortcuts to cut off things like headlands, uh, which is what I'm gonna do here just to get to the other side of Zenor Head to show you the view on the other side. But um, unless you go wrong and you, it can't be avoided, um, please do stick to the official route. You're not gonna save much time by going on this path here. The official coast path just comes where my finger is there, uh, round the headland, and it does join on to this path. Uh, but this is the view when you get to the other side of Zeno Head. Again, there is the coast path just coming down uh, off the headland there. Um, but the view is absolutely stunning on the other side of Zeno. Six miles from here to get you to St Ives. This is without doubt one of the most welcome sights on the Arc of Attrition 100 and probably even the 50 mile race. This is Porthmere Beach in St Ives. You have come down off the cliffs, down off the most difficult section of the race. Um, you've completed Pendine to St Ives and now you just have tarmac, path and road it's still about a mile from this point here to the checkpoint, the final checkpoint uh, of the race. Uh, but at least when you get here, you know you've done it. You know you've done that really tough section. If you're one of the faster runners, the faster runners will get here just as dawn is breaking. It will have been dark for the whole time over that section, uh, but it will be uh, just coming up to sunrise uh, at this point. Um, slower runners it could be 10 11 12 o'clock uh, midday by the time you get here uh, but uh, that is a, a wonderful sight when you see it uh, doesn't matter what the weather is it could be blowing a gale and you get to Porthmere Beach and you breathe a massive sigh of relief uh, just a mile to go to the Guildhall so when you're directed by the Archangels you'll come up this road 
and you will come to the Guild Hall, which is the final checkpoint on the Arc of Attrition 100. And the Guild Hall is this building here. You will go in through those double doors there, or triple doors. This is the Guild Hall. You'll go in there and you will be able to rest there. Now you need to be there by 2 p.m. If you're not here by 2 p.m., cut off is 2 p.m. You will not make it. So you have to be here uh, well before that. Uh, and then when you leave, you go back down that road and you will turn to the right. And uh, the Archangels will put you back on the right route. Uh, but that is it. That is the Guild Hall. That is your final checkpoint on the Arc of Attrition 100. Uh, crew, you are not allowed to be here. Uh, so uh, as you can see, there, there's no parking anywhere. Um, certainly not for um, 400 or so competitors of a 100 mile race. Uh, you can come and cheer, you can come to St Ives and, and pay for parking in the car parks um, and cheer your runner on, uh, but you won't be able to park and come into the, uh, the checkpoint. These dunes, with their long sandy beach, have been used by people for more than 5,000 years. Welcome to Gwythian and the start of the so-called Dunes of Doom. That's the St Ives Bay Holiday Park there. Uh, runners will come through this car park and head to the corner here where you'll find this stone. The whole of the Dunes of Doom, and they're not Dunes of Doom really, you know, once you've done what you've already done, on the Ark of Attrition, this sand will feel perfectly okay. So let's follow these stones and see uh, if we can get through the first section here. So we can see the next one in the distance, or I can at least. It should be light when you come through here. You'll find all of them have the acorn sign on. Uh, most of them will say Upton Towns. There's another one. Acorn sign is clearly there, you know you're on the right path. Occasionally you might not be able to see the next one just up ahead, but just at a few more metres and you will spot it in the distance. Okay, this is an interesting one here, we come to a crossroad, so if we turn right, we can see there is a stone to the right, but if we turn left there's also a stone to the left. I want to stay near the sea, I do not want to go inland, so the idea is to keep uh, nearer the sea. Uh, when you get to the stone you will see again you are clearly on the correct path. Uh, so if it's a choice of left or right, don't go inland, steer nearer to the sea. And the going is not hard, I mean that sand, it, okay it's sand but given what you've already done. Um, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, the sand is fairly well hard packed on a lot of this, so you're not going to be sinking into sand dunes. Um, it's not as bad as you might imagine it to be. So we'll leave it there. Uh, that's what you need to do. You just need to keep following those stones on the dunes of doom and you'll get through no problem to God Reavy on the other side. So by now you've had a few hours of flat-ish running since you left St Ives and you travelled through the town of Hale and then you went through the Dunes of Doom and then you've run all the way along through the Dunes of Doom to this point here which is Godrevi or Godrevi and uh, this is the point at which you will start to climb back up uh, onto the cliffs. This is the North Cliffs. Uh, heading towards Porth Town, you have now 12 miles or so to go. Uh, there is this crew stop here. Your crew can meet you here at Godrevi. Uh, they will um, park in the car park right next to this path here, uh, and you can stop there. Uh, this will be your second last crew stop. You can also uh, meet your crew in Portreath, 
Uh, Putreath is about four, five miles, four or five miles uh, from the finish line. We are about 12 miles from the finish line here at Godrevi. When you reach here, if you are a faster runner, um, well, certainly if you're an, an, one of the elites who's going to finish in under 24 hours, uh, this will still be light here. Um, you should be able to get through here, no problem, without your head torch. If you are a, a sub 30 hour runner, again, it will be light, but you will be sensing that dusk is approaching uh, the final few miles. Uh, you will start to see the sun going down. Uh, to get in under 30 hours, you will need to hit Porth Town uh, before 6 p.m., the finish line at Porth Town before 6 p.m. If you are merely trying to get in under cutoff, so you're probably going to be around 32 hours when you get here. It will be dark already, so it's going to be 7, 8, nine o'clock at night if it's nine o'clock at night you want to get a shift on <laughs> and get to the finish line but when you're here you know that you really haven't got too far to go just that last final push up onto the north cliffs past hell's mouth into Putreath, out of Putreath, and into porth town and the finish at the eco park Hale is back six and a half miles on that path. Uh, Godrevi is two and a half miles back. We are up on the North Cliffs uh, on the Southwest Coast Path. And this is Hell's Mouth. This is a very well-known, very popular tourist attraction on the Southwest Coast Path. There are about three miles to go before you get to your final crew stop at Putreath and from Putreath it is about five miles to go before you get to Porth Town and then the Eco Park and the finish of the race. If you've got this far you are pretty much guaranteed to finish as long as you can get in within the cutoff. The running along the top of the North Cliffs is easy, it is flat um, all the way pretty much to Portreath. There are no barriers, by the way. Apart from that little bit on Hell's Mouth, the cliff fall down here, 50 feet, 100 feet down to the floor. Do not stray off the path and go too near the edge. Uh, but it's stunningly beautiful as well. So you'll have uh, good views, good running, as you finish off your Arc of Attrition 100 or your Arc of Attrition uh, 50 mile race um, along these smooth and easy paths. Uh, there are some surprises at the end, so uh, I'll leave those for you. But uh, there are one or two ups and downs, let's say, just before the end of the race. But other than that, it is nice, easy running. If you have time, enjoy it, relax, take it all in and uh, be satisfied with your work over the course of the last 30, 36 hours. There is the coast path sign pointing to Porth Town. We are in Patrith. There's the coast path sign pointing back up to Godrevi. Um, the official coast path comes down the road. Uh, so this road that we're just going to have a look at now. So that road there is the official coast path. Uh, but it's one of those ones again where um, you would be forgiven for going the wrong way. And I've, I've done this before. Um, there are a couple of routes off the hill. See this hill here. There are a couple of routes off that hill to come down and one of them brings you down and then you can kind of come across the beach and one of them brings you down and you come down onto the road. Um, at this stage of the race you're so tired uh, nobody cares anymore unless you're at the sharp end of the race and it, it, it is the difference between winning and losing the race uh, then um, you know you could be forgiven for going the wrong way to get down into Patrice. Anyway, once you're down, uh, you can meet your crew in the car park here. I think it's the Atlantic Cafe. 
that we're at here. Um, and then you head down that road that I'm pointing and round the back and then up that road there and up again further. And it's quite a long way up there before you get directed back onto the coast path. There might be a marshal there to direct you back onto the coast path, but just keep going up that road and you eventually see um, a sign on your left um, to go back onto the coast path. And from there, even though that sign said three and a quarter miles to uh, Porth Town, it is longer than that. This is the Mount Pleasant Eco Park. This is just outside Porth Town, on the top of a hill, beautiful location. And this is where you will arrive for registration on Thursday evening or registration on Friday morning. This is also where you will have your kit checked and where you will catch the bus to the start of the 100 at Kovrak or the start of the 50 at Minak Theatre. Uh, this is private parking here for staff and the like, but uh, the main parking is over in the field over to the right. That building there is where most of the action happens, kit check, uh, race briefing, that kind of thing will happen in there. Uh, there's a cafe here. Hopefully the cafe will be open for you at some point uh, whilst you are at the eco park at the beginning or the end of the weekend. And then we walk here to what will be a very busy room, certainly at the end of the race. This is the finish line of the Arc of Attrition. That arch there, uh, there will be a little bit more razzmatazz than just that, but uh, that arch there is the finish line. You'll run across that field, having come up the hill, run out of Porth Town, along the road, up the hill, across the field, and you will finish right there. This will all be very busy on Saturday evening as runners finish their 150 mile races. And it, round here, uh, this is where you will jump on the bus. There will be plenty of buses to take you to the start line. Don't panic about getting on them or missing them. You can't drive down there. Kovrak is very small, not enough car parking space for everyone to descend on there in their cars. So you must get the bus. The Eco Park is also where we will have the trophy presentations that will be at 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, presented by Vassos Alexander. So make sure you're there for that. And that is the end of this ARC prep series of videos. Enjoy your race and we'll see you out on the course.